Hi, this is Nathan Shower, and I'm gonna show here how to generate meshes in GID. In particular, I'm gonna use this three point bending example that has this mesh supported here and displacement boundary condition at the top. The crack is depicted here. And so the dimension of this specimen is 0 to 700 in x, x here, 0 to 150 in y and 0 to 80 in Z. So let's open GID. Uh, my password is expired, but this mesh will be smaller than the 1010 nodes for the free version. To start with, let's load the problem type for ISAT, created by Alfredo Sanchez, with the help of Felipe Alves. And let's start by creating a uh, rectangle here, that rectangle on the back here that is going to be from x to 0 to 700 at z 0 equals 0 and y from 0 to 150 for that let's create the rectangle click here and here enter first corner point I like to use this tools coordinate window to help me put the values so the first point was 0 in x, 0 in y, 0 in z. And the second point was 700 in x and 150 in z. 150, 150. Close. Let's click here to zoom extent. You see the lines represented in blue and the surface, surface represented in pink or purple. Now let's extrude this by 80 in Z. I'll turn this a little bit so look at the angle here. So let's extrude this by doing utilities copy. I'm gonna copy surfaces. The first point is could be at any point in this plane so this is okay and the second point will be at 80. And I want to extrude the two volumes and we click select select this surface uh, middle mouse click or ask or escape and ta -da. we have the domain again lines in blue pink is surfaces and the cyan or light blue is the volume you can close this you can rotate to look at the mesh look at the domain a little bit Okay, um, I could put the boundary conditions that are here or the material, young modulus, but I'm gonna leave this for later. I'm first gonna generate the crack file that is in the middle of the domain, the CRF. So for that I'm gonna create a new layer and this new layer I'm gonna call it crack. Yeah, I think it has to be, it has to be called crack like this. You see that you have this check, that means this layer is the one being created now. And I could I can just not show the other layer domain. And I'm gonna do that. So the crack here, if you look in Paraview, it's here if I click on the crack, it's gonna show the domain. So it's at x350 and y goes from minus 0 0.1 to 50.1 and Z from minus 0 0.1 to 80.1 um, so back to GID let's create it I will open that tools coordinate window again and that this time instead of a rectangle I'm gonna create four lines and a surface for this four lines so I click here in lines and I go from minus 0 0.1 to, uh, no in X is 350 always so y is minus, uh, minus 0 0.1 and z minus 0 0.1 apply then the next point would be in z equals to 80.1 so let's do this at z 80.1 next point is at y 50.1 And last 
point is at z minus 0 0.1 and then we have to reconnect to the first point and here click join so they are joined now I have these four lines but as I said they are not a surface yet so we click on this button here and we get the four lines escape and you see the pink surface was created okay uh, we can show both meshes together if you click here both domains I'm sorry now let me continue without showing the background domain and let's define our crack front so clicking this button here assign and let's click on the line that is the crack front here escape and you can even draw all crack fronts and it's going to show that this is a crack front then let's define a surface assign uh, in a surface let's click on this pink surface escape uh, draw see if you can look if you want to look and it's all a crack surface now we need to define the meshing parameters for this crack here for that let's see how the crack looks like here in the part of view so it has on this edge two in this, in this edge only one, in this edge only one, in this edge only one so let's do the same thing, so we go to mesh structure, lines, assign number of cells and I want two cells in this line and I want one in this, this and this close and I think we're done with this oh it's good also to set that you're using triangles here so mm. okay then let's set the parameters for the other domain and in here we're gonna set first in this button the material properties that in this example is 3.2 E4 um, so 3.2 E4 and Poisson is 0 0.25 I think 0 0.25 perfect um, can go back assign to a volume okay, okay. you should have set that get this volume here, the CN1 escape we can also draw and show the material yes, it's here, isohook 3D we're good now we need to set the mesh parameters for this domain and we're gonna do this by mesh structure in the volume and we're gonna assign the number of cells so we're gonna select this volume escape then we want how many cells here we have 14 in X 6 in Y and 2 in Z so let's do the same thing here 14 in X see that when I click in one line it clicks already the other lines that have to that will be the same escape 6 in Y these four lines escape and 2 in Z, this line and these other lines are already clicked. Escape, and we can close. And the boundary conditions here, I will put only after generating the mesh. So we can click here, generate mesh. The size here doesn't matter because it's getting the mesh parameters that I previously set and let's take a look at the mesh view mesh this is okay it's a memory issue uh, for GID in this version uh, here's the mesh I think it's better if we see the mesh in view render 
flat. And you can see that is the mesh that we wanted. You can click here to rotate it. And we can look at also the crack mesh here. And one is embedded on the other. So in this view, you cannot see both. So let's go back to normal view. And if you see here, that's the other mesh. Not that easy, but they are both here. Now we are left with setting the boundary conditions. Um, I will turn off the lights in this crack mesh. And I will actually go back to that other render, the flat in here. So we know that for these three nodes here, so this, let me check, yeah, this node here, we need to one, two, three nodes put displacement boundary conditions. And these displacement boundary conditions are minus 0 0.6. Um, so, okay, let's, well, I keep losing myself here. So click here for boundary conditions. It's in Y, right? If you look in the sublime here, Y, yes. And its value is minus 0 0.6. Let's ask, this is already node, not surface, which will be here. And let's assign. So one, two, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's 14, so after 7 is the one we want. Let's click here. Probably it's hard to see, but you can see here on the bottom that says added one new node to the selection. Then let's select this other node here and the third node here. And we can finish. Three new nodes. Added three new nodes to condition. That's nice. We can draw here and we cannot see the other ones. Probably if I change the view. Here they are. So let's go back to the other view. I think it's better for putting these boundary conditions and finish here. Now the other boundary conditions are constrained and all value zero. But let's take a look at part of you. Actually you have here x, y, z, here x, y, x, y. Here you have y, z, y and y. So let's put x, y, z, x, y, x, y. So here on the left, I actually rotate it and look from beneath. So here's x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, and x, y. So x, y, z, assign to this one. One new node added to selection. Very good. So then the other ones are x, y. So let's put x, y, click assign, and put one here, add a node, and another one here, add a node. And voila. Now the other side, as we said, we have here y, z, y, and y. So let's do the same thing in GID. Have Y, Z, Y, Z. Assign this node here. Okay. And you have two Y's. So assign here and here. Okay, two nodes. Add the two new nodes. Very good. Now let's go back to normal and visualize all those boundary conditions to see if they are correct. Draw all displacements. So you have here y, y, y with a fixed value. Here you have x, y, z. Here you have x, y, x, y. Here we have z, y, y, and y. Just like we wanted. Okay, so... Now we have mesh, boundary conditions, material properties, we have the crack, and we are ready to export those files. So let me rotate this guy here. Yeah, looks good. 
file um, oh no you have to click this button here write input files let's click it let's go back here let's create a new folder mm, mesh three point band let's enter this folder and let's just call this three point band click save it's okay and let's go to that folder mesh three point band it always includes this that here that we have to change so the one with GRF is the background mesh the domain and this one will be the crack file we can take this one and put CRF use CRF and let's look at these guys here this is the GRF and the GRF here created by Alfredo Sanchez you have the domain you have the elements and after the elements we have the material and you have the boundary conditions the nine of them the ones that have minus 0 0.6 recall and this part would be related to traction boundary conditions applied on surfaces and finally let's look, let's look at the CRF file if you open it, it has the nodes the elements and, sorry, the elements here, there are three elements and crack front, there is just two lines if you recall and here it is you'll be able to create a mesh for iSet using GID both the domain and the crack with boundary conditions and material properties thank you very much